Hi everyone, this is Glenn. Welcome to this tutorial, a first in a series of greenhouse designs. This one's a classic. Here's a few sketches that I would use to plan my design before getting started. Can you grab yourself a splat, an eraser, a ruler, as well as a few pencils? And let's get going. Let's first think, how would this appear from the top? Let's plan the garden section, top view. We could plant two strips, one along each side, or to get even more plants in the area, we could plant in kind of a U shape. And I think that one looks good. These lettucey type plants are really easy to draw. Spinach leaf type ones, just lots of little shapes the same. A little bit of color. Let's think about the front view. If we draw a square, which will be a cube in 3D, and we draw a slopey or called a pitched roof, if I draw a line straight up and then connect the apex down to the corners, that's about as simple as it gets. We could add a door, of course. We're going to need to get in to water our plants. A handle there. And don't forget we need to use a plastic or glass material so that the warmth can get into this greenhouse. And we can grow plants all year round. Now, the garden from the front, a nice workable height. I'm going to go roughly halfway up. And there's my garden. It's going to need some soil. So will you plan to use a planter box or will you put some pot plants on a shelf and run that around? A little bit of shadow makes it look kind of 3D. If that's made out of brick, the heavier the brick, the more it heats up during the day and during the cold nights releases that heat. It's called thermal mass. Uh, I always finish my drawings in really light pencil like that. Not so good for you guys because you can't see it. So I'm going to break my own rules and I'm going to draw some dark lines. So there's step one. Don't forget the middle splat. Come up. Two lines. Boom, boom. Spin the splat. Line up those corners carefully and the two far edges. All right, if you can find those two points, put a line roughly in the middle. You're going to need the splat straight up and down for this. That line is vertical or straight up and down, so that'll give you an idea. Straight up and down, all the way up, one splat length. Now we're going to find that point and we're going to connect it to that point on the edge. I'm using the splat, but because it leaves a little blip, you might be best to use your straight edge or your ruler. So we're connecting there. Same thing on the other side. Great work. Now I'm going to leave you to repeat those exact steps again at the back and finish the roof off. Yay! Well done! See these three lines in the middle? We're going to change them from lines into a thicker piece of metal or wood. So, we're going to trace a line alongside each of them. What you do is put your rule on the line, slide it off, draw a line. It doesn't matter which side of the line you draw on here. Right around the outside, those six edges, we're going to do the same thing. To be consistent, Let's go inside each of those lines. So line up, slide, draw. And now, your turn to draw. Now you're going to offset the triangle of the roof. Offset means to draw a line right beside another one. So we've got one, two, 
and the vertical one. It doesn't need to be quite as thick as the others if you don't want. Same thing at the back. Let's offset three lines there. Also the one at the top. That's called the ridge. Now let's have a look at our garden from the top. The shape of the garden is about halfway up. So let's put a point roughly halfway up. I'm going to take this splat and draw on the right splat angle all the way to the back corner. And from the corner, we're going to bounce back in the other splat direction, which is called isometric. One splat length. Hop over that little one there to save you rubbing out. Here we're changing splat angles again, and we're coming forwards. Looks like I'm missing a line in the back corner, so let's pop in that vertical line. And, off and offsetting now to make that member at the back look a little bit wider. I'm firming in the far edge of the garden. So let's have a look right around there in the U-shaped garden. And there it is, a scene from the top. And next comes drawing the inside of the garden. You can see there. It's going to be roughly in that shape, but we want to get it exact. And here's how. We'll call those lines the end of the garden bed. So let's draw those in. One there, and another over there. Don't draw them too long, or you won't have enough room to get inside the glass house. Right, I'm talking about two points. On the top view, those are the same two points I'm talking about. We're going to use those to line up the splat and draw a splat line all the way back, but stop before you get to the end. That's if you're drawing a U-shaped one. I'm going to repeat on the far side garden. And those two points on the end, I could just join with a line. But if I'm working accurately, I should be able to slide the splat down and connect those two lines. If it doesn't line up, don't worry, just fudge it. Great, next, I'm erasing uh, these lines and redrawing them because these members should be in front of the garden beds. So I made a mistake drawing the garden bed lines through them. Now I've just got to fix them up quickly. To help visualize where this garden's going to be, I'm just roughing in some lettucey shapes. They look really good if you overlap them like that one there. So draw one full one and then kind of partly overlap them. Here's some spinachy, salad leafy type plants. Do you like to eat salad or would you grow herbs in your greenhouse? A little bit of detail, a splash of colour, and there you go. On this side, my garden bed is made out of bricks. So I'm going to represent that on my 3D view here. I'm looking at three different points. I've already got lines coming down on those, but I'm going to drop a line down to there. Now, to make it look like brick, or an old-fashioned word called masonry, draw some lines in the right splat angle, and then here and there, just do a gap. Best not to draw all the bricks in. Uh, let's say a few little rough bits there. It could have been painted over the years, and you're just getting a hint of the bricks. Do you get the idea? Sometimes drawings look better if you don't have all the detail in. And if you do, make sure you draw them nice and lightly. Here I'm using the splat small ellipse to draw some pot plants. Now I'm going to draw a shelf. So I'm going to draw a line at that end of the garden. Remember we talked about the end of the garden beds? That's it there. And then right splat. Let's give it some thickness. I'm going to offset both those lines. You know that means copy the lines a bit further down. Maybe another pot plant. A little bit of timber grain somewhere. Some legs on the bottom to make it look like something's holding it up. I think we've got a pretty good greenhouse going on there. Terracotta is what's used in the old fashioned pot plants. So you can make that brown and then away from the sun, make it a little bit darker. You can see above the greenhouse, I drew a little sun in. So on the non-sun side, we're going to add a little bit darker brown. 
maybe a bit of shadow underneath the pots as well. Your soil will probably be darker, so let's draw a nice black line in there. Okay, here I'm tipping the pencil over and I'm giving the masonry or the brickwork just a little bit of colour. Let's say it could be painted, for instance. I'll bring up the detail just a little bit more. You probably want to use a sharp pencil for that when you're doing those lines. And remember guys, don't get carried away. Sometimes less is best. If I want to really tidy those lines up, I'm probably better off using my ruler. But make sure you leave them uneven in a few spots because bricks are never perfect over the years. They get lots of bumps and scrapes, right? Oops, I've forgotten to put in my door. Let's have a look at where it goes. There's the top of the door. Even though it's flat, it will be on an angle. So I'm going to need to show you a trick here. Get yourself a little bit of an eraser and a longer rubber. If you get backwards and forwards enough time, you'll actually erase even through those colour pencils. And now the top. Alright, that is a fairly large piece of glass, if this were made out of glass. And glass is expensive, so what we usually do is make smaller panes of glass, especially in the olden days. Big sheets of glass were hard to manufacture or make. So I'm drawing a thinner line there. I'm copying the same angle as the roof and drawing that thinner line. I'm going to start from the top again. I'm copying that angle, but I'm offsetting it to there. So now I've got two pieces of glass, but if we want them smaller, let's divide it again. I'm going to go roughly halfway along there, copy that angle, that copy that line, and offset it up to there. Now give it just a little bit of thickness, don't do them too dark. The thinner the members, the lighter your lines generally. Alright, so on a glass house you'll probably find to hold the frame up, those little members there might extend all the way up until they hit the outside. And the same thing across. And this is totally up to you. You can design your own little crisscrossy bits on an angle. You can copy mine. Here I'm trying to show that this is glass on a sunny day. I've, plan I've drawn a kind of circle in the middle. And now I'm using just a little bit of yellow pencil around the circle and fading it. Notice how I'm keeping all my pencil strokes pretty much in the same direction. When you're colouring in, or rendering as we call it, um, try to keep all your line strokes in the same direction. What about the front? Well I'm just picking any angle with my ruler and I'm drawing lots of lines. Now it's quite okay to stop and leave a gap and then continue on, but notice how the ruler is always in the same direction except when I'm just fixing up the outside. Now I'm bluntening the pencil because I want a nice gentle effect here. What I'm doing away from the sun side, I'm just darkening in a little bit. Drawings look boring if they're all the same, so try and add a little bit of variation. Do you remember what this line at the top is? We called it the ridge. I'm going to update my top view and see if I can draw in the ridge. Now does it go up and down or left or right? Remember the ridge is pointing towards the opening and there's the opening. So that's where I'm going to draw the ridge in. What about the little crisscrosses? Well I've got one on each side of the ridge. So there's two lines and there's the crisscross. Alright cool. I'm going to make it look like glass. I've got a little sun on that side. And on the other side remember we kept our strokes in the same direction. If I covered the whole thing in really dark yellow, it would probably look like it's been painted yellow. So the trick is to have it white in some areas and yellow in just a few areas. Now with a sharp pencil, I am going to tidy up each of these lines. I'm going to do the ones in this direction now, my left splat. And down the bottom. 
Let's do the vertical, the up and down lines. A sharp pencil along a ruler really is the best way to do this. A few thin lines are better than one big thick line. And those ones a little bit thinner. The crisscross, let's get them nice and thin with a really sharp line. Now, see I'm kind of flicking it there. Lines sometimes look really interesting if you don't complete them all the way down. Your eye actually completes the line and that's what makes it what we say visually exciting or interesting. Now this line is dark, it's called the cutting line and it goes all the way around the outside, still with a sharp pencil. The handle, a few more details, maybe so it doesn't look like it's floating in the air. We'll do a little bit of grass around it. You could draw a chicken and a lizard and all sorts of things. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe and give me some ideas on what you'd like to see. Thanks. Bye.